let's say you're feeling these emotions right now, okay? And it's like, well, okay, these are great sort of emotions to feel. You know, don't make them wrong. Appreciate them. Because what these are is there's something called emotional signals or other words like calls to action. What it's basically saying is these emotions are anything that you call negative is that something needs to change, okay? What's making them negative is that we're calling it never negative instead of getting the message. Every negative emotion, fear, depression, sadness, hate, anger, all will dissipate or become easier to deal with once you get the message that's trying to give you. Now, what I mean by that is, you know when you feel anger, can you feel that in your body or fearful? Can you feel that physically? You know, you definitely do. Because, you know, you, does your body get amped up when you feel like when you start feeling them emotions? Yes, it does. So we want to make sure we need to recognize what we're doing with our physical bodies in that moment. Your physiology has a major role in how you feel, okay? So most people who don't feel anything barely move. And that's the problem. They don't have enough emotion. They don't have enough emotion, so they don't have enough motion. Again, if you're feeling these and you don't know what the message is, it's hard to figure out what the message is in that moment when you're in that state. Right, so you want to be able to get yourself out of that state by changing your physical body. What I mean by that is, is your facial expressions, your gestures, your breathing patterns, your shoulders, and you know how you hold yourself. It plays a massive or major role in how you feel. So it's very important. The first thing I want you to do, guys, is next time you find yourself in a negative emotion, is see what you're doing with your physical body first. Okay, so that's the first stem from this. Is to check your physiology. Physiology is basically a fancy word of how you use your body. So you want to be able to check how you're using your body first. Breathing. Your, your facial expressions, your shoulders, are they down, are they up? So just try, I want you to try this for me for a minute actually, a little test, just to really show the impact of your body. I want you to just like sort of maybe just, just play out fully with me on this, right? Just stand up and just like say stand in like a power position, like arms and your like sides by like, like this, and look up, breathe deeply, and then just smile. Grin to good, really smile, okay? And now, what I want you to do in that state, hold it for a good 30 seconds, Breathing, smiling, breathing, smiling, holding that physiology. Now, what I want you to do is get depressed, but don't do anything to your physical body. Just notice how you feel. Try and get depressed without changing your physical. Feels kind of weird, doesn't it? There's a there's a physiology pattern to depression. Depression. There's a physiology pa pattern to anger. Every negative emotion holds a physiology to it. Again, another little test I can give you is just to stand there and just create some tension in your body, and then create a huge smile on your face while you're doing it. Do you notice now there's some, there's a little bit like excitement there now? Excitement has tension in it, but the difference is you send a different biochemistry or signal in your body when you create a smile. Physically, it changes. So you actually change the pattern by creating a smile, but that tension's still there. So when people are excited, let's say, they might feel fearful as well. There might be a little bit of fear in there because, again, fear has excitement in it and excitement has fear in it. For example, you know when you go like on a roller coaster at a fair or, you know, amusement park? You know, you're in the queue with your friends and stuff, and you're sort of oh, anticipating there's a little bit of fear there, Rob. You're excited because you know that you know, you're know going to get a thrill from this ride. So that's a prime example how some emotions can be intertwined with one another, or at least get to a point where it will make you feel like you're feeling something else, but really it's probably not that, you know? So it's a good way just to be able to check how your physical body is in that moment. So once you've checked your physiology, now we want to get the message. So we've, we've obviously, we clarify what we're really feeling first. It's like, okay, what am I really feeling? Okay, I'm, 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 let's just take anger. You know, let's take anger just to be conservative. We've checked our physical body. We see there's some tension. So anger has a lot of tension to it, right? So let's just say we check the physiology and like we're deep, we're breathing really shallow. We just sort of like realize that, okay, I'm really clenching my fist. I start to loosen that off a little bit first, right? Or maybe I'm gritting my jaw a little bit, or you know, just start, just start to loosen your shoulders off. And then you notice your breathing pattern is off. So what you want to do is start breathing correctly again. You're probably finding anger, you're not breathing, you're either breathing really shallow or you're not breathing at all. Then the next thing we need to do is just obviously figure out, okay, what made me get angry in the first place? Obviously, that could be an environmental influence, it could be someone said something, or someone broke one of your rules. Which by the way, the message from anger normally is you've had a major rule violation being broke, right? Either yourself has done this or someone else has broken it for you. So you've had, it's a, anger is a rules violation. The only reason we can sort of feel anything is because we have the five major senses in our body, you know? You have, your, you know, you have sight, touch, smell, feel, and hearing. They're the major five senses. The only reason you can feel anything is because of those senses. Without those senses, which are basically like switches for our body to really bring information in and out. What's happening is you've had a trigger response that's led to anger, that's given you a certain physiology pattern to keep in that state, or at least justify it. But really, again, when it, when you check down or come up 
If I chase, again, your stress, I'm going to come to your deepest fear. So whenever you're feeling anything a negative, I don't care what you want to call it, whatever it is negative, you either got a feeling of hurt or a feeling of loss or both. And it's normally a feeling of loss. Not always, but usually. But if you follow the trail of uh, emotional anatomy, because that's what I really delve into, it always comes down to loss. You know, you might feel hurt in the moment, and that's where anger comes from, I was hurt. But what do people normally do? They ignore this part and jump straight to anger. But if you really like question them, they're actually really hurt. You really broke one of the rules, let's say, you know? Either a major rule or a minor rule. You broke a rule somewhere. What I want you to remember, guys, is in that moment, if you can just get the message straight away, you know, you might feel this for a little bit. You might just, you know, instead of staying in this all day, though, you spend like minutes rather than hours or days. So you can really go, okay, I'm really angry about this because someone did this or someone said that. But we want to be able to take back control and say, okay, what I'm really feeling is just even hurt. Okay, that's a, that's a very that's a valuable le lesson, really, or message, let's say. It's very, very valuable. Don't make them wrong. You want to appreciate that message first, you know, because it's trying to protect us, you know. It's just trying to, that's, that's your body's way and your senses way of being and say, look, there's a threat there. We need to resolve it now, but unfortunately, we want to jump straight to anger. So if we can like consciously capture it and just really get, stay in the moment and just sort of go, okay, I'm feeling angry. But that's because I'm feeling hurt. All right. Okay, I'm really feeling hurt. What I really want to do now is maybe see if I can transform it or change that by, let's revert back now. Let's change some of my physiology, let's say. I might, I might change my breathing patterns and stuff. But the way we're going to deal with it is change this first. Get back to homeostasis in the body. Let's not just, don't want to deny what we're feeling. That's the thing. I, I'm not... I'm not about denying. A lot of people might think that, but I'm not. I'm all about feeling the emotion, but just don't stay there. Don't live there. You owe it to, you owe it to yourself not to. You know, you, you want to be able to be more than that. So if you're really struggling with coming out of it, the main thing we need to do is sort of change the meaning. The reason is we feel angry is because someone did this, and that means this. In order to feel angry, you have to create a meaning first. Any of, any of these are created through like a meaning. We have a meaning. There's a reason why we're feeling that. Because we've communicated to ourselves that way. We've gone, okay, they've done this, so that means this. Now I can feel angry here, let's say. In order to be able to change, to fully get the extent of really real change, real me like change the meaning, so you can really change what how we feel, that's what we want anyway. There's two things we need to do to change the meaning, is we need to change our current perceptions of what's going on. Change what something, you know, change our perceptions of what in the environment is. You know, if we're sort of like saying to ourselves, oh, this person's this, that means they don't care. Or what does it really mean? I know when someone's like really like smart, if they'd be able to say, you know, this and this happened. And then, but then I thought to myself, you know, what else could it mean? But if you can take that on board, what else can this mean? It means you're open again to something else. The chance of a person is trying to be like, trying to hurt you might be. We want to make sure first that it's not just us, you know, reacting. We don't live in reaction mode always. So the first thing we need to do to change the meaning is change our perceptions or, or change our current actions or both. What you can do is do both because it's just going to be more powerful. You change your perceptions, you change your actions, change your approach. You know, go to the source if you need to. Go and ask them. You know, go don't don't just go to them and vent, but come from a place where we're responsible, not them. So we want to be able to come to them and be able to say, listen, you know, when when you did this, let's say, I took that in my brain as in to say this. Did you mean that or? you know I, I just need to figure that out within me not only does that allow you to just come and come from a place of care but it also puts responsibility back into the most important person and that's yourself anyway right so that comes from a place of like you know you just want to say look I just, or clarification let's just say you just want to be able to fix it within you first so you go to the source that's how you do this okay that's how you change your perception the actions would be actually actually doing that because a lot of people would be very fearful to actually do that you ask someone to do that and they'll be like no way no i can't do that you know or you know it's just one of those things where it's like oh, i ain't doing that no way it's, it's, it's too much hard work because in order to do that i think you have to have some form of uh, vulnerability let's just say or at least perceive it as vulnerability but realistically it's not it's really a good power to have being vulnerable it's has this weird stigma to it doesn't it the way you have to let go but really you're not best way to explain it, it's just sort of an assertiveness but not in a cocky way you're not being assertive in a way where it's like i'm demanding demand is different assertiveness is just being like listen i just want to make things clear for both of us and you come from that place you come from a place of we not just me you want to you want to care for one another you know you want people to care for you so we want to reciprocate that hope you can uh, adopt some of this guys i know i've really briefed on this so far and i'm just starting out these videos so you just have to bear with me because it's all new to me as well. The information is not new to me, but this sort of environment is video. I mean, so 
But yeah, I hope you can adopt some of this straight away. So again, just a real brief. This is obviously emotional fitness. You want to take, let's say if you get anger, check what you're doing first. Let's figure out what you're really feeling first. Let's just say, okay, I really feel anger. Feel any of sort of negative emotion, you're feeling these two first. You know, so we want to revert to this first. So it's like, what I'm really feeling this one. Am I feeling this one? 